Hey there, if you are a professional photographer and you have an amazing camera, but you can't seem to use your DSLR for your everyday family life, for your family photos, I'm gonna give you five tips on how you can use your real camera, your nice camera, to actually take family photos that you will cherish for a lifetime. Hey there, I'm Caitlin, and I'm so excited that you're here on this channel. We love to help photographers build profitable and purposeful businesses while also intertwining our personal life into our videos so you can get to know us a little bit better. Today I'm going to talk about um, the idea that professional photographers have really awesome cameras, really great gear, and they take beautiful images of everyone else's families and yet you neglect your own. And I know this is a problem because I hear it from hundreds of people who see me taking photos with my real camera of my kids, of our personal life, and they're like, I just can't seem to get my nice camera out for my own family. I just, it breaks my heart that I know how to take great photos, and yet I don't have any of my own kids, and I'm capable of doing it. And so I want to give you some tips that have really helped me. The last three years of becoming a parent, um, I have not only been able to consistently use my camera, but use it in a way that doesn't stress me out, um, but allows me to capture what I wanna capture, and then I can put it away, and it doesn't have to be um, this overwhelming part of our personal family life. My kids do not hate my camera. My husband doesn't hate me for having my camera out. It's a really beautiful balance, and I'd love to teach you how to do it in your own life so that you can have images that you are proud of, that capture the season of your life that you wanna savor and keep forever, um, while also not freaking out and stressing out about it. First tip is, you have to think about what lens you want to use. I have found that the best lens overall for someone who wants to be shooting inside their home, um, and maybe if you don't have a lot of light, would be the 35 millimeter 1.4 because now there are other prime lenses that are slightly wide, um, that will allow a lot of light in, that have lower, wider apertures, but um, I love the 35 1.4 because it's the most accurate prime lens that has some width to it, and it allows me to focus very quickly for toddlers that are moving, kids that are running around, um, and it allows me to fit a lot in. However, if you do have a good amount of natural light and you have moving kids in your house, you might find that you like the 24 to 70 2.8 lens, which is what I have. This is my at-home setup. This is what I use. So this, I literally, before this video, we started filming, I literally just went over to the table where this lives and just picked it up. It's ready to go. It has four bars of battery. I let it get down to one before I replace it. It's got a card in it that is very special, and I'm gonna share that in another tip. And it has a lens that I know that I wanna use for documenting the kids. I can zoom in and out. Our house is bright, so I can use this lens. If it was maybe a really dreary winter day and there is no light anywhere, the 35 millimeter lens would be on this. So know your lens, that's the first tip. Know what lens you need uh, in order to capture what you need to capture. The second tip is um, you need to find a place for your camera to live. A lot of people think that, oh, I'll just get it out when a moment strikes. That's the number one mistake you're making. Because for me, I have found that everything that I've taken photos of, like for example, I'm just gonna turn this on. This is Evie this morning reading a book. She was just reading a book in the living room. It was bright enough to use this lens and she was so peaceful. Nothing crazy was happening, but she looked beautiful. And I just took a quick picture of her reading a book. I never also, there was this moment where she was hugging her cousin and it was so sweet, they weren't fighting, and took a, a few photos of them. I took probably a total of like eight shots, but it was a sweet, beautiful moment and I probably can do a whole spread in a family yearbook from this one little moment. If my camera was not sitting in its spot where it lives all the time, I never ever would have taken the time to go in my office, piece together everything, put a battery in, find a card, I think that's the number one reason a lot of people never use their big cameras because they think they have to unpack it all, package it up, put it away, store it safely, and then bring it out when it's time to use it. And I do not live by that rule. I leave it out like this all the time. It has a filter to protect it. Actually, it doesn't, um, but <laughs> my other lenses do. This is a new lens. We don't have a filter on this, so it's not protected, but you know what? I like leaving it out anyway because it allows me to capture life as it happens. I cannot tell you how many times a week, not every day, but during the week, 
something cute is happening and I just grab my camera and it's right there. So what is that place at your house? Is it a little a side table that's a little you know up high where your kids can't grab it? Is it just a corner of a kitchen counter where no one can grab it but it's easily accessible and nothing will spill on it? Figure out where that spot is for you in your house and that's gonna make a huge difference. Leave everything set up, ready to go with the card, the lens that you wanna use the most and with battery. So tip number three is that you wanna notice, start paying attention to maybe one to three spots in your house where you have good light. And this is really important because you may think like, oh, Caitlin, that's easy. You have a house with lots of natural light. But here's the thing, I know that I don't ever take photos of my kids in front of those doors in that part of the kitchen because it's dark and shadowy. Um, there's a, I take pictures on this couch a lot, in that couch, and sometimes in the foyer. But I know where the good spots are and I know where the bad spots are. And once you start training yourself to notice these things, not only do you notice what the good spots are in your house, you will also start, also start to notice that there are good spots in the morning, in the afternoon and evening. And when your kids just happen to be playing in that area or your dog sitting in that area, or you'll start to pay attention to like, oh, now would be a good time to snap a few photos of them. Um, they're in the good spot. So next tip, number four, is to keep your family images and your professional images completely separate. Like, don't ever intermix them. Don't ever put an engagement session and then a few birthday pics from a family uh, outing on the same card. Don't ever try to shoot and mesh personal and um, professional on the same hard drive. I have separate things for everything. So let me explain. Um, in my camera, when it's sitting out in its spot in our home, it only, and only ever has this card in it. It's a 128, it's a family card. We don't use a 128 card for anything else. So if I see a 128 card, we only have two of them. One was from last year, one's from this year. Um, I keep it in my camera at all times. The reason it's 128 is because it takes a lot to fill up this card. And I know with how busy our life is, is I, I don't have time to be dumping a 16 gigabyte card constantly. So I just have this family card that I let fill up months at a time. Um, now I shoot a lot, so sometimes I fill it up like once a month, but I'd rather have that than have a card that I'm like switching out and having to dump and reload, you know, I don't wanna deal with that. So the 128, is awesome. Um, I also have a family hard drive. These are amazing. It's a solid state drive. It's made by Samsung. Um, super tiny, super compact. If I drop it, nothing's gonna happen to it. And it is, well, how big is this? Two terabytes. And I can normally fit our entire year's worth of family photos just on this drive. So just that tip alone means that the whole idea of organizing just got a lot simpler because it only goes from this card to this hard drive. And that's all I have in my entire life to try to sort through and have to manage. I just have to manage what's on this hard drive. There aren't images of my family floating around on my desktop, on any other drive, on my other computer, nothing. It's just all right here. And when you kind of live by that rule, there's just nothing confusing about it. There's nothing messy about it. So um, the fifth and final tip is to make sure that you're not afraid of the dark. And that sounds very technical and maybe it does like it doesn't fit with the other things, but I think a lot of times people who are professional photographers, and I've talked with other people who are like really great photographers, they cannot seem to motivate themselves, they can't get motivated to bring out their real camera unless it's perfect light, unless it looks really beautiful. Um, and I get it, like I, I understand that frustration, like why it's not even worth it to like take the photos and then have to edit the photos if it's not perfect light. Let me show you something. This is my, guys, I get weirdly excited about this stuff. This is a beautiful image in a huge album. This is our um, 2019 family yearbook. This image, image was taken like at, I don't know, eight o'clock at night. The Christmas tree lights were on and one lamp was on. I think this was like ISO 4000. So I mean, it was it was high and it was still beautiful. It was still worth it. It. I think so many people look at photos that I take of my family and they just chalk it up to, well, you got a really bright white house. And I'm like, yeah, but these, how can you explain these? Because this was taken at night, no natural light, 
just one lamp and a Christmas tree and a cranked, cranked up ISO. And sure, it's grainy. I can see the grain, but I don't care. Those are pictures with their dad that we're gonna cherish forever. So don't be afraid of the dark and don't be afraid of bad lighting scenarios. If you're a professional photographer, if anything, pushing yourself to shoot even in bad lighting scenarios will make you a better photographer in the professional side of your world. So I hope this is helpful because for me, once you have a system and you know ways to overcome the obstacles, you can start using your camera, what you love and what you're passionate about for your own family and feel like you're saving your life too and not just your clients. Okay, so I do have a bonus tip. Tyler made me aware of this and I really do think it's helpful. I actually think it's probably the most helpful tip out of everything because when you think about it, a lot of people don't take out their big camera because it's stressful. And you think about, well, why, why is it stressful? It's because we don't know when to stop. You know, we, we love taking photos, but like we will keep shooting and shooting until it's so stressful. We're trying to get the perfect shot and we don't know when enough is enough. Um, and so for me, I have been trying to pay attention to recently why did why does that not happen to me like why am i not stressed about my camera and i've realized that um in my mind i kind of have this filter this system of like what i want to capture and um my ultimate goal uh is that i want to be able to create a spread of whatever i pulled my camera out for so the kids are playing and friends are over and i bring my camera out into the living room i know that the goal ultimately is to be able to feel like fill up one spread of a family yearbook which normally means I take a pulled back shot, a tight shot, maybe a vertical shot, but there's normally just some variation in the composition and I shoot enough to know like that I captured at least something good enough um, that I love to put in a book. Like, let me, let me show you for example. This was Michael and the kids, our kids, one Sunday afternoon, just playing on the floor. So I have a pulled back wide shot of them interacting. They didn't really know I was taking the photo. Then I got a little closer, just Graham. And then Michael knew I was taking a photo, but he was smiling down at Graham, which is really sweet. I knew when I was capturing, now I probably took like triple the amount, but I took them in a course of like 30 seconds. And I knew once I shot these, it's enough. It's all I needed. Just wanted to capture what was happening, like remember that afternoon. And that's all I needed. So um, I'm gonna find you another example because this is fun for me. Another good example, um, would be this spread. So we go to King's Dominion a lot, which is a theme park around here. So like Six Flags or like Disney. Um, I do not take my DSLR to Disney. That's a side note. It's just too stressful. But when we go to like a theme park that's like right down the road and we go for like an hour and then come home, um, I have taken my DSLR like once during one trip. I don't take it to every single trip during the summer because I don't think that's necessary. Um, but this is a good example. So we went one day, I took one detail shot and then like made sure I had a shot of the big kids and the little kids and then one shot of them on a ride, like having fun. And then I put the camera underneath the stroller and I was done. And I think when you have that uh, ability to shut it down and know when enough is enough, uh, it allows you to have so much more freedom to be like, it's totally fine. Maybe I'll take a few iPhone shots here or there, but I know when I can stop and I know when I feel comfortable. If you have big goals or dreams of what you want to do with your own personal photos, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Whether you want to do a family yearbook or you want to have a family blog or you just want to update a family Instagram account more regularly or you just want to organize them for yourself on a hard drive. I don't know what your goals are but I would love to hear some ideas. So leave them in the comments below. So not only I can connect with you, but you can help inspire other people. Also, we are going to be adding to this collection of documenting your family's visual legacy. We're gonna add more videos. It's gonna be awesome, but I'm sharing more and more of our techniques and our approach to documenting our family's life and saving it in your book form. So be sure to subscribe because I don't want you to miss the next videos coming up in this series. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.